What's up, YouTubers? So today, before I went to work, I had a little bit of downtime, and I thought, why not do another kind of part two of a test I've already done just to get some more data, and that way we can all learn something. So that's what we're going to tackle today. Let's get into it. No, I'm not drinking beer before work. Uh, viewer of ours recommended this, and... I ended up getting both the normal and the strongest one. And I'll tell you what, this strong ginger beer, non-alcoholic, so I don't get demonetized, uh, is pretty potent, makes me sneeze. So if you like ginger beer, pick some of that up. So unofficial sponsor. So anyways, what we got here is I bent a bunch of tests like MIG, Stick, uh, 6010, 6011, to, uh, away from the face on a fillet weld on a single pass with eighth inch rods to see, or well in MIG it was just 035 wire, but bent them to see which one would hold up being bent. And that's what I've tested in a bunch of videos thus far. Well, the MIG in 7018 held on and did not break. The 6010, 6011, 6013 all have failed in this test, which is kind of to be expected because this is more of a tensile strength test. So you would expect the higher strength wires to pass and the lower strength wires to fail. But that's what got me thinking, and why not do a multi-pass weld with 6010, which 6010 failed, the plate basically it broke off of it. Well, with a three-pass weld, the question is, will it still fail? My answer is probably not. It will probably flatten out. However, there's always that, uh, how do I put it, possibility that the top toe line is going to break like it did with this. I mean, basically the top part of the weld, it tore into the plate and then the plate gave up. So it's hard to say if that's what's going to happen, but I guess we're going to find out, won't we? So I'm going to get set up and I'm going to stick weld Two plates, this is one of them at about 90, 95 amps, 60, 10, 65 percent dig or so, whatever they recommend on my Miller Dynasty. And that's what we're going to weld it at and see what happens when we bend it. So I just got done welding these, ran three passes, so a root and two cover passes per se. This weld, well actually both of them have a little bit of a blowout on the corner. I did fix the first pass, did not go back and fix the second and the third one. That's my bad. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference for this test, but if it does, hey, <laughs> oh well, that's on me. I don't have the time to go back and fix it, unfortunately. Out of these two, I would say this is a better weld. The reason is, is that both of them are stacked right alongside of each other. This one, I kind of came down a little bit too much. I don't think it's going to affect the strength that much, to be honest with you, but who knows on that. Now, there's a couple other things I'm going to mention here. One, with 6010, you tend to get on a tow line uh, the slag. There's a nice little line of it here. You don't want to weld back over that with like 7018 because what's going to happen is it's never going to melt through that and it's just going to be left, which is going to weaken your joint. And if you've done any x ray welds with 6010, they call that wagon wheel tracks or wagon tracks, and you'll bust x ray because you're like, oh, okay, this is a clean weld. And it, I mean, it does look clean, but you weld right over that. And when they x ray it, you have a 
literal it looks like a like horse and carriage buggy <laughs> wheel tracks right down your welds on both sides because of that so to clean that out I would use if it you know critical work I would use a uh cut off disc on a grinder and just buzz right through there just ever so slightly just to clean it out or you could use like a sharpened tungsten like this thing just to pick that out or a really sharp chipping hammer will also work same thing here the big risk too is that on this top toe line we could have undercut that you can't really see and a good indication that you may have undercut is this uh slag here won't come off so by the look of it, I looked at these really close and I don't see any undercut, but you know, there's always a possibility there of it. So again, you know, do your due diligence on cleaning it, inspecting it. So with all that said, what we're going to do is we're going to chuck these up in uh, plate breaker 2000 over there and see if either one of them will bend flat like this guy does or did. See that? Get out of my way, plate. All right. So let's go and do that. All right, so I got the worst of the two chucked up here in the shop press, and we'll bend this one first. Now, the previous test, we had a failure. The weld cracked near the tow line and et cetera. It failed. The question we're going to answer in a very short amount of time is that if put in an appropriate size weld for the material thickness, will make a difference in the strength of the finished product, which I'll be honest, I think it will pass and it will bend. However, I think that toe line, we might see some tearing at that point, and that's due to the nature of 6010 produces a fairly brittle weld. It doesn't have a whole lot of ductility compared to like ER70 MIG wire and 7018, but we won't know unless we try it. So let me get bending this sucker. I'm not going to film the gauge because we're really just concerned over pass-fail with this. We're up around four tons, five tons almost. Well, something broke. I'll set that aside and we'll test the next one and we'll look at that. And this one failed as well, by the look of it. Maybe not. All right, let's go and look at what we got on the table. Well, guess what, guys? We have two failures that are basically identical to the previous 6010 with a single pass. So even though we have a more appropriate weld size, unfortunately, we have a failure. Now, there's a couple reasons why we may have this issue. I'm going to give my theories on it, and as always, you can feel free to leave a comment on what you think the root cause of this. But when we look at this, we got to make a couple assumptions here. One, this steel that we're welding on is probably moderately stronger than 6010 tensile strength. So what would give up first? in a bend test, the, the weld or the plate, probably the weld. 
this interface line here where the weld is, and you can see it actually tore into the weld a little bit. It might be a little bit hard for you to see, but tore and split the weld completely off. Well, at this point, we're mixing a weld metal that has less ductility, less elongation, etc., than the parent steel that we're welding to. So under stress, essentially the change in the composition at this weld zone, so within the heat affected zone and right on the weld, made this more brittle than this. Therefore, under stress, where is it going to tear? It's probably not going to tear on this weld part. It's likely a little bit stronger than it is where this weld mixed with this material. So uh, looking at the side profile, it tore through and then is coming down and around the weld. So the change in the heat affected zone as well as the area where the weld penetrated, you now have an alloy of both this and this, and that alloy is more brittle than the plate and it may be more brittle than the weld. So it's kind of crazy to look at this. And, you know, we could say, could there have been a little bit of undercut in there? Yeah, but I did a pretty good job of avoiding that. My travel speed was fairly slow and I fed in a lot of uh, rod. I didn't see any, I mean, nothing really worth, you know, writing home about. So I really don't think that that was it. Especially because on the other ones that I've done with 6010, like I know there was no undercut on this one and it still broke identical. So I really think that this is just a case of the particular rod. It's lower tensile strength, it's lower elongation, and it's overall just being more brittle than MIG wire ER70 and 7018 is what caused this. So it's pretty interesting to me that even three passes couldn't hold this to bend flat, okay? The interesting thing, and I didn't mention this, had I bent this towards the face, there's no question that this wouldn't have failed, okay? Uh, it would have taken a lot more force to bend that and to break it without a doubt. So for strength-wise, multi-passing it when it comes to bending towards the face will increase the strength, but as you saw here, it didn't pass any more than the previous one did with a single weld. Which also, it's worth noting, again, I'll bring these guys out, which are just MIG on cold plate ER70 with a 200 amp MIG welder and just a single, not even that good looking 7018. I mean, this sucker is far from a pretty weld. I mean, just, that's a pretty crappy weld if you ask me. I'll take ownership of that. And that's still passed. I mean, no issue. So it's kind of like an old wives tale. People say, oh, 6010, it's strong enough. 6013, 6011, it's strong enough. Well, it depends on what you're welding. I mean, if three passes on this sucker, on both of these, didn't pass, and a single pass of this, which one's really stronger? I mean, bending away from the face, this is now, this would have held more strength bending, a, you know, towards a face in this, but you can always run multiple passes because this is an undersized weld for those plates. So anyways, pretty interesting stuff. I guess I'll just, rather than cutting the conclusion, I'll just go to conclusion now. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned that you, there are differences in strength in particular rods and processes. And that it's, it, uh, how do I put it? It's imperative that you understand those, therefore you pick the correct process for what you're welding. 6010 is a great rod, I love it, especially on stuff that's scabby and as a root pass, but I wouldn't wanna be doing a uh, 6010 weld out on something that needed strength in comparison to like 7018. And I'm sure you're thinking right now, well, what about a 6010 root and 7018 fill. So three pass weld, two 7018 single root of 6010. Guess what? Next time uh, I got some time, I will shoot that and we'll bend test it. And I bet it won't fail like this. So we will try it though. So anyways, if you got any comments, questions, concerns, you know where to leave them. Thanks for sticking around until next time.